So this is the uh, build I'm doing for a bloke at work. He bought me a Carrera that I asked him to get because uh, I was struggling to fit the pedal assist sensor on a couple of other bikes because the crank was too close to the frame. So we'll crack on with this. I'm just going to grab an old mat to put down. The first thing we'll take the back wheel out. A lot of the kits do come with a fairly cheap tyre, so uh, I'm going to use this Continental Mountain King. I'm going to swap this over to the kit wheel and then we'll uh, test the fitment. I think we've got to swap the. Uh, it came with a free wheel, so I'll probably use the new one. But if this is better. Depending on how many gears I'll put whichever one on. Just need a tool to put that on. So I've got the tyre on, the uh, kit wheel and the disc on. And the free wheel, which is the new one. Now this just points out a few issues that you tend to have with these kits. I've got this side, the caliper. It's too close to the motor, just so it does come with a spacer for the on the kit, but it's just plastic. So I'm going to space that out about four, five mil with some washers or a nut, and then the same issue this side. You can see we've got. A washer on the inside there it comes with two there's one on the other side that one but I'm thinking it's not going to be able to go in on the bottom cog and there's not much room so I'm thinking when I tighten that up it's going to lock the freewheel so uh, I'll try and find another washer for that side to space that out a little bit. So I'll take that back out, space the disc, and then see if we can get it bolted up and spinning with the caliper on. Yeah, and hopefully that's one of the one of the more main issues. And then I'm going to make some some lugs to wrap over, and tend to you can bolt them into here. And probably move through one of these holes just to stop the wheel coming out with under torque because uh, you can buy torque arms but I just tend to make some brackets up myself and it's worked on mine so we'll get that done and so I've spaced the disc out and I've put another washer in on this side and we've got another washer on this side so it gives it a little bit more clearance I had to stretch the frame out slightly but only by hand nothing too major so I've got an old frame that I've already used a piece off which I'm going to cut these back lugs off and I'm going to try and fit them upside down over the axle so I've made these little brackets that hold the axle in and then bolted through underneath both sides and tightened it all up. I've got now I've got clearance on the caliper. Not much, but it's enough. And then we've got the middle five gears working on the back. And then the, this for the second 
little torque bracket wraps over the top of the axle and the bolt is through the frame and the only problem I've got is it won't quite go in the, on the lowest cog because it's too close to the frame but we're already stretching it quite a bit so I didn't really want to put another washer in um, you don't tend to use the gears much on these anyway you can't keep up with the motors so next I'm going to um, take the crank arm off using a little crank puller I'm hoping that that's the right size I'm going to get that off and see if the pedal assist sensor will fit on there So I've got the crank pedal arm off with the tool, fairly easy, I just needed to put a little insert in there so it would push on it. Uh, that's your pedal assist sensor on there. And then that one, it's got an orange wire pin plug, which I take it goes to the orange on the motor, because then you've got a multi pin. This was a volume volume art, is it volume art? Volume art off uh, eBay. So next thing is to sort the handlebars out and get the LCD display on. That one's green connector. You got a throttle which is orange. Uh, two brakes which are red. So I'll take it. They go to the two red, orange, and green on that end which in turn goes down to one plug which will obviously go into this piece with the two coming off the battery and then that one, big one on there should plug in to that one there so we'll flip it over see what I can get on the handlebars where we're going to run the wires and uh, well, get a battery on after that and rig it up and uh, see what's happening. So we've got the grips on, the levers with the cut offs, the LCD on, and then throttle, brake lever, obviously cut off, and uh, Plugs it all in. That all plugs in there, all colour colour coded, which is nice. Down to the back. I just gotta get the battery mounted on here. I normally put two extra riv nuts in just to uh, give it a bit more support. And then we've got to just wire the battery up to them too. Get the pedal back on. So I'm just going to cable tidy up a bit the wiring, as you can see it's a bit of a bird's nest. So we'll get the battery on and uh, see what happens. So we've got everything buttoned up, put a bag on just to add some of the wiring which I might put some of this further back and in the bag. Uh, just got to adjust the gears on the back and I think I sprayed the front wheel black just to match up a bit better. And I'm just going to try and do a quick demo. I ain't got a phone holder so to bear with me I'm just going to do a bit of a demo of the different pedal assist modes and uh, see what sort of speed we can get. So we're going to try and do different pedal assists uphill. See it's a slight uphill so we're in one and it gives you a nice steady sort of seven seven or eight mile an hour if we up it to two going up sort of ten ten mile an hour and three kicks in quite a bit okay. sixteen Going to fall, going to hold off my hour on So, anyway, 
goes all the way up to 30 mile an hour. And it's uh, so that's in four that's ill, no effort whatsoever. And five's even more more poke but it's a bit dodgy one handed but I'll give it a go. Put that in five. It's quite quite a violent kit gets going. You know, can't do that one and this. Not on this anyway. But you get the idea. Mine's quite a steep hill and that pedal. You don't have to pedal at all, you can just do all this using just throttle time. So I've got the build finished, got the front wheel painted black just to match up a bit better. And uh, I just did the drain here on the two um, limit screws on this side, just there, but it stops it coming too far over this way or too far the other way. And we've got the top six gears working on there, and there's only a couple on the front, uh, so 12 gears all in all. But pretty much I think it'll just be left in top gear so just a few uh, tips and tricks about the build really obviously get your spacing right on the back so that nothing's hitting the motor fairly easy to do really remember to have a fit torque arms or make some brackets um, other than that, you've got the LED thing which you just turn on by holding the M. Helps probably if the batch is turned on. So holding the M, LCD comes on. So to change any settings, you press the bottom and the top arrow and hold that in for a couple of seconds the same one you see it says PO1 at the top that's your screen brightness and then you press M in the middle same one gives you five power level assist modes whereas if you change it to two Oh no, sorry, that's miles per hour or kilometres an hour. Next one is your voltage, so it goes all the way to 72. We've got 48 on this, so that one. And four. I'm not sure what four is, I'll have to look at the instruction manual. That's different level assist so you can put it in two which gives you three levels of power assist and one gives you five levels you can change all sorts that's the wheel diameter precise to point one of an inch um, and then you can set your max speed which goes to 100 but obviously we won't get that and yeah there's quite a lot of settings but if you just press and hold the two arrows again, it goes back to your normal screen. You've got different change of levels on the bottom there. And hold the M in to turn it off. So it's ready, ready to go. All done and dusted. Hopefully, be careful with it because uh, obviously it's anything above sort of setting two or three is for off-road use legally anyway so uh, if you fit in one of these kits then obviously be careful so yeah he bought the he bought a Carrera Vengeance um, 
entry level e bike from Alfred's, 1200 quid or more. Uh, got bored of it within a week or two, so for about what is paid for this and a bit of a fee for me, it's cost him four or five hundred pounds less for a lot better performance. So if you fit one of these or can get someone to do it, then personally I think it's uh, a lot better than just having some at legal speed. Never go any faster. So, in my personal opinion, the kit is fairly good. It's probably better than any of the ones I've used in the past. It's got all the wiring controllers built in. All the wiring's colour coded. Um, so pretty much comes with some instructions in English which tell you all the settings like I was on about on the LCD change all the sensitivity of the pedal assist kicking in you can up the amperage but I've just left it at 12 amp it goes up to 20 amp so um, I don't want to knacker it up for the bloke I'll let him ride it for a bit first and see what it's if he wants it turning up he can do it I just don't want to burn it out on day one, obviously it's not my bike, so but yeah, good kit all round really everything boxed well uh, yeah, bang on